hey hi everyone this is going to be lesson number two of redis playlist so in this play playlist i'm going to talk about how the data is basically stored in redis so as i told you in previous uh, lesson that redis is an in-memory database so it's gonna keep everything in memory and that is how it makes things really really fast to read or write however if we keep data only in memory then in that case we are going to lose the data okay once let's say if the server is rebooted or let's say uh, services redis services crashes and if we restart redis we are going to lose the data because we are not really storing the data on disk so if the data is not on disk whatever is there in memory it gets deleted or it gets removed or it, it because it is volatile right this uh, that's what you have already read in your computer science uh, notebooks so now to prove that point i'm going to show you i'm going to keep some data in redis we are going to write some data in redis and then we are going to restart a redis uh, database and then we are going to see what is the situation of that data okay so let's connect to redis by writing uh, redis cli now you can see we are connected to redis and then in order to see all the keys which is stored in redis we can use keys okay so currently you can see we don't have any keys here so i'm going to write a key value and i'm going to call it uh, i'm going to call the key name as username and i'm going to call value as my name okay so i'm just going to put my name so uh, now if we want to see the value of uh, this key which is username we can just use get and the key name so key name is username and here you can see we have got the value now if we want to write multiple uh, key name we can do that as well so i'm just going to write user one name and going to set the value to john and if you want to see user one value we can see the value of uh, this key as well okay if we want to see total keys which which is there in redis at this point of time we can again do keys star so here you can see we are getting all the keys so currently we have stored two keys and we can see both the keys now everything looks okay because we have wrote the data to redis and also we are able to read the data from redis now at this point of time let's say redis crashes redis services crashes or let's say someone uh, gracefully restarts redis services and then we are going to see what is going to happen so i'm going to write system ctl uh, restart redis service so we are restarting redis service and then i'm going to log into uh, redis cli again and we are going to do keys space star okay so here you can see when redis service has been restarted we do not have any data so whatever data was there it has been it is gone because the data was there in memory and it was not really being saved anywhere on the disk so that's the reason when we restarted uh, restarted redis services everything is gone okay so that's the reason i am uh, explaining this lesson first because uh, when you are installing redis and you 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 know start going ahead with your application this is a fundamental concept which you need to understand that your data must be uh, made persistent if that is what you are expecting from redis okay in some scenarios you don't really want to uh, your data to be persisted so that is fine in that case you can continue to use redis as it is but if you want to make uh, redis data persistence we must learn about redis persistence so in order to make redis database persistence there are uh, three options so one is called uh, redis rdb okay so rdb is just redis database so if we enable rdb backups if we enable rdb backup in that case whatever data which we write is going to be saved to an rdb file after certain uh, after certain seconds or certain interval we can say okay so that interval can be defined by us so we can define this in a configuration file again whatever configuration which we write it is always going to be in the configuration file so let me exit from here by writing exit command let's also clear the screen and the configuration file is stored under etc redis.conf so we are going at this location and i'm going to search for save keyword and here you can see it says save the database on disk so in order to enable saving the database on disk we we can see there are uh, this is what we need to do we need to write save and then we need to provide uh, some you know some value so let's understand what is these values are so i'm just going to go to i'm just going to go here so here you can see uh, the syntax of enabling this configuration is something like this 
So we are going to give this value save 60 and 1000. So what it means is this configuration will make Redis automatically dump the data set to disk every 60 seconds if at least 1000 keys have changed. Okay. So in this case, let's say if we if we set this number, in that case, let's say if we insert 1000 keys or let's say if we update 1000 keys, okay, in that case, Redis is going to save, take a snapshot and going to save it, okay. And which location that snapshot is going to be saved, we can see that as well. So let me do one thing. Uh, let me enable this snapshot, okay, and let's, uh, let's change it to 60 just going to make it 60 and 1 I'm just going to keep it at 1 because if there is any changes made even let's say if I insert one key I want the data to be saved uh, if after every 60 seconds or if you want you can also change it to let's say we, we want to uh, change it to 5 seconds we can keep it 5 seconds okay so let's keep it 5 seconds and you can see we can also give multiple uh, multiple configuration as well so let's say either you want data to be saved on this condition or you want data to be saved on this condition or this condition so you can enable all the three configuration so i can open all of these or if you if i want to give you know any other configuration i can keep on adding them as well so eventually what we are doing here is if we have more number of keys inserted then we want the data to be stored faster okay so let's say if i insert only 10 keys i want data to be saved every 300 seconds but let's say if i update uh, 10000 keys i want data to be saved at every 60 seconds now let's say if i am adding a million records i don't want to lose all those million um, million records right i don't want to lose all those million keys so in that case, I might want to take the backup every five seconds. Okay. So in that case, I can enable by writing save five and here we can write one million. So that is how it is going to look like. Now, just for the purpose of demonstration, we have written save five one. So I'm just going to uh, comment all the other configuration item. Okay, so this is how we enable, uh, enable RDB uh, backups. Now one thing is where this uh, RDB file is going to get stored. So if you scroll down, you can see, you can move to this section and you can see there is a, uh, there is a property called DB file name. And here you can see the value is dump.rdb. So this is the file name which is going to get created. And at which location this file is going to create it is defined by a directory. Okay, so in the under DIR, you can see we have value where libredis. So now under where lib redis directory, we can see we are going to get dump.rdb directory. Okay. So I'm going to save it. And now we are going to go to where lib redis because this is a, uh, this is a location which was mentioned there in redis.configuration. This is where we want our RDB file to be backed up. We can do ls hyphen LRT. Currently, we can see we do not have anything here. Okay, so we also need to make sure whenever we whenever we make changes in Redis configuration file, we will need to restart Redis uh, database. So I'm going to restart Redis database by writing system CTL restart Redis dot service. And now let's do ls hyphen LRT again. Okay, you can see currently there is no there is uh, there is no backup file has been created here but let's connect to redis cli and what we are going to do is let's write some data we are going to say user1 and user1 i'm just going to give john let's do user2 i'm going to put uh, my name let's go and write user3 i'm going to give some other name okay let's put uh, steven and let's exit from here let's do ls hyphen lrt now you can see we have dump.rdb okay and i think every five seconds is basically going to create a snapshot and now this snapshot has has the data okay so let's say now uh, i'm just going to uh, restart redis database again and then we will see whether our data is persisted or not persisted so let's do system ctl restart redis dot service now we are going to do redis cli again 
let's do key star and here you can see our data this time is persisted even though we restarted redis database okay so because let's say if you have dump.rdb file so in that case when we restart database or when whenever we start database services in that case redis is going to first uh, restore everything which is there in dump.rdb and then it is going to work as it is okay so now you can see all the keys are available it means we have been able to make our data persistence we are not going to lose the data which is there in redis database now uh, this is one method rdb there is other other method of enabling persistence which is called aof append only file so what append only file does is it is going to create a log file okay more like a, a log file um, and then it is going to keep writing all the commands which we fire at redis it is going to keep appending all those commands in aof in that uh, append only file and then when let's say when we uh, when we restart uh, redis in that case it is going to read all the instructions from aof file append only file and going to enable the same state of redis which uh, which it was before restarting the redis database so let's do one thing let's go to redis configuration again and for that we need to go to redis.conf and now i'm just going to i'm going to disable uh, this rdb so here you can see we have commented save and then we are going to search for I'm sorry we are going to search for append only now here you can see by default append only is marked as no so I'm going to enable it by writing yes and also here you can see append file name is going to be called append only dot aof if you want to change the file name you can change it by making changes here but I'm just going to leave it append only dot aof again which directory it is going to be stored it is defined by slash uh, dir okay so uh, where is dir okay. one second let's search for dir I think I already shown you previously so I'm just not going to waste the time again so uh, this is this is the place where append only file is going to get created okay so uh, let's do one thing since we have made changes in the configuration file uh, we now can uh, restart redis database so let me and before restarting redis database let me also remove dump.rdb file so i'm going to remove rdb file and then i'm going to restart redis services now let's see what has happened now when we uh, now here you can see when we start uh, when we started redis services we can see dump.rdb file and append only .aof file but dump.rdb is not going to work because in the save configuration we have commented out everything okay so uh, dump.rdb is not really going to uh, work in this case however append only file is the one which is going to keep all our data instructions so let's say I'm going to connect to Redis CLI and I'm writing set name to my name, set age to some age, set uh, gender to male. Now what has happened is if I open append only dot AOF file here you can see whatever commands which we wrote on which we processed in redis all those instructions has been saved here in append only file okay so now whenever we are restarting up whenever we are restarting redis database what redis is going to do is it is going to read everything from append only file and going to make the same state of redis uh, by reading all these in instructions from append only file so let's do one thing uh, let's re restart redis database again And now we are going to connect to redis cli now here you can see if i write keys space star we still have all the data which is persisted okay so all the data is persisted we have all the information available here so that's how you enable 
uh, AOF. Now, in some case, you don't really want to enable either uh, RDB or AOF, so that is completely fine. You can disable that uh, all those uh, configuration from Redis configuration file, and uh, that that will basically mean that there is no persistence. Okay, the data is not going to get persisted. However, in some scenario, you may also want to enable both RDB and AOF. So you can do that as well. You can enable both RDB plus AOF. Again, why you would like to enable only RDB or why you would like to enable only AOF or why you would like to enable RDB plus AOF is, all, is going to be basically depending on your use case or your application or the way you, uh, you, you know, want the data to be persisted. So here quickly we can just go through uh, some advantages of RDB. Now here you can see RDB is uh, it's like a single file point in time representation of your Redis data. Okay, so now everything is there in uh, RDB file. If I want to you know, restore, uh, restore RDB file, I just need to copy that RDB file and move it to some other server and I can install Redis there and restart Redis by restoring that RDB file. Okay, so that is possible. Again, RDB since it is a, it is a file, you can easily compact this file and keep it on any file um, storage okay and that can be either your Amazon S3 basically you can keep it anywhere wherever you can keep the file RDB allows faster restarts with big data set compared to AOF so RDB is actually little faster when compared with AOF so that's one thing now one thing you would have noticed in RDB uh, you know we uh, defined RDB to take periodic backups okay we told rdb that okay we are going to uh, you should be storing uh, you should be taking a snapshot after so and so seconds or after you know i have inserted or updated so and so number of keys so that's the reason rdb is uh, generally little faster in o aof what we do is we want data to be synced line by line or we want data to be synced at certain interval so Again, yeah, you can go through the documentation. I'm not going to go uh, through the documentation line by line, but you can go through AOF advantages, uh, disadvantages, and so on. Uh, 